Ho, 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 we made this. Hello, this is Mark here, and I'm with Dev. Say hello, Dev. Hello, once again. <laughs> this is one of our multiple episodes that was supposed to be one big fat episode because we, we recorded for a long time. We've established that, so let's let, let's let's just, just brush over it. This one, I think, is probably the most meaningful in as much as it was actually a serious conversation and we didn't get giddy. And I think, however silly the franchise is, it is important to be serious sometimes, you know? Absolutely, especially when we're dealing with very big topics like this. It's our chat about Haitian voodoo and Louisiana voodoo, where we talk about how those real religions and faith have influenced the fantasy world that is the Chucky television series. And yeah, like I say, we got super serious, didn't we? Yeah, it was introspective. It was uh, respectful. You know, uh, they, 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 the, 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 the franchise creaked open a door and we, uh, we took a glimpse through. <laughs> There's a lot on the other side. Exactly that. So, yeah. Chat about voodoo, coming your way. So we're going to move on and have our planned little chat about voodoo, voodoo, dambala, and other stuff regarding the kind of voodoo law within the Chucky series. And I just want to highlight the fact that we are not academics. We are not capable of anything other than essentially a Google research, which isn't proper research. We don't have access to journals. We don't have access to theoretical books on faith and religion and that sort of thing. We aren't academics in any way. And therefore, our opinion is essentially a layman who's got Google. It is not anything resembling a academic level, scientific level, theoretical level research. To say, I did my research. (laughs) Well, that could be a whole other argument about other idiocy that we're not getting into. But what we're getting at is that we are just two fellas who have decided we want to learn a little bit more about the background in the best way we can. But it is nothing resembling anything like expert knowledge. We've put in a few hours. We've not put in a lot of time. Would you say that's a fair way of kind of caveating everything we're about to say i'm not sure caveating is a word <laughs> oh i definitely especially since uh, however much research we put into this uh, this is very much curiosity on our end because uh, even from a cursory glance at wikipedia <laughs> actual voodoo does not resemble the voodoo in this show at all especially or Nambala. indeed any popular culture yeah. shit Voodoo is grossly misrepresented and I've been to New Orleans and fuck me, is it commercialized in New Orleans? Yeah, they perpetuate the stereotype to make money in New Orleans. Yeah, and I remember the Preacher Show does that as well. That really delves into the voodoo side. And I think, I guess there's an aspect of that maybe in real life to the same sense that people think mm. you know people pray to god for selfish reasons there there is an element to that in that these c- characters in fiction are abusing the uh quote unquote magic that exists but yeah very rarely in fiction do they really explore the actual side of them i mean you get that in in like supernatural they explore you know uh, judeo-christian religion and that gets explored most often in like supernatural fiction mm. but like you re- what we're go- what the research that we're going to be talking about even bare bones 101 voodoo that r- it rarely gets actually uh, any name drops in fiction it's always just what can we do practically with voodoo yeah and i think if you're looking at something like voodoo Um, So let's say Louisiana voodoo and Haitian voodoo, which seem to be the two things that have influenced Don Mancini here. 
these are still active religions that you need to have some sensitivity around because this is people's real life faith. Whereas if you look at something like the Norse gods or the Greek gods, so let's say Thor and Odin or Poseidon and Gilgamesh, whatever, these are all now legendary characters, legendary things that no one actually follows as a faith. Whereas something like Haitian voodoo and Louisiana voodoo are very much still people's belief systems. And so there's a different level of sensitivity required on these kind of things. It's okay to make Thor a woman in the Marvel comics. In fact, it's cool. But if you were to, for example, make Baron Samdi a woman, would that be inappropriate? I think, to make it clear, it always seems like in Chucky and, uh, you know, Baron Samadhi was someone I was going to mention. It's like, I think a lot of people recognize the name Baron Samadhi from the Bond films. Which is hardly a pleasant depiction of voodoo there either. No, but they're not intending to actually try and depict voodoo religion in there, are they? That is a character who is taking the name Baron Samadhi. And that's yeah maybe what is happening in the Chucky world as well. It's, do we know for certain that this is Dambala doing this? And is it inherently the same voodoo religion that we are talking about? No, I don't think it is. I think it's a fictional voodoo in a fictional universe. And everyone does that. There's Brother Voodoo going back to the Marvel thing I was briefly touched on. Brother Voodoo is a Marvel character in the comic books that not only is he a practitioner of voodoo, he's actually one of the heroes and he uses his voodoo for good. So again, voodoo has more actual reality in, you know, he is a superhero who uses magic via voodoo. And there isn't anyone who does that. That That's not a thing that voodoo practitioners have in the real world they don't have the power to use magic because magic isn't a thing in our world you know yeah and that's something i definitely uh noticed in like the uh uh, the research and stuff that possession is it seems very much like not even a cursory glance because they didn't have wikipedia back then but like just from what they knew they were like oh yeah voodoo dombala possession i'll just use those words to uh, you know, build this plot because the, mm. the, there is a large aspect of possession in voodoo and you know Haitian voodoo, but it's not the possession we're familiar with in the Chucky world. No, I think if we have a brief kind of synopsis of what we've discovered about Haitian voodoo and Louisian voodoo, because we literally came into it with nothing but a stereotypical, sensationalized. We've watched Bond etc kind of popular culture equivalent of what it really is so Haitian voodoo it's basically a syncretism of lots of traditional west and central african faiths it kind of amalgamated a number of different tribal beliefs into one overarching thing and one of the biggest elements of it that i had no idea about was that they do actually believe in one god And things like Dambala are actually Iowa spirits. I don't know if I pronounced it that right, but I-W-A. Yeah, I think for a lot, I just want to say, for a lot of these terms and names and stuff, I think there are multiple pronunciations because there's definitely multiple spellings. Yeah. And I think that comes from the different tribes. Again, I don't speak any African languages whatsoever. So I'm coming from a ignorant white British. It's I-W-A, so I'm going with... Iowa, but it could be any pronunciation really. And Dambala isn't a god, he's an Iowa, which, if you remember in the last episode, I was referring to him as a god because I didn't know any better. Hmm. And so, you know, I've, I've learned. And Haitian voodoo has quite a lot of respect in the spirit of the dead, it has offerings to the dead and to their Iowa and god, divinations, and herbal remedies. But what I didn't know at all is that there's actually quite a lot of Catholicism in Haiti as well. And that 
does influence Haitian Vodou. Vodou has no leader, orthodoxy or exclusivity. You can be a Christian and practice Haitian Vodou. Again, I didn't know that. Uh, there's no real code of ethics like a more Abrahamic religion might have, in as much as morality is more to be true to yourself rather than a list of things that you need to do to be moral, which I thought was fascinating because that resonates really well with me as a humanist because I am an atheist, I am a humanist, and I have come up with my own moral code and my own sense of morality as I've got older and wiser and learnt about the world and decided what's important to me. And so I've got, I think maybe I've got more in common with Haitian Vodou folk than I initially thought. But what we can't ignore that there is an element of animal sacrifice that is acknowledged and is a thing that Vodou does encourage when you're presenting offerings to the spirits of the dead or your Iwas or God. But so for me, I don't see much difference between, again, this is coming from a, as a vegetarian. I don't see much difference between offering cooked meat to a God or a spirit and then burying it. I don't see much difference to that than doing it live. You know what I mean? You cut the throat of a cow And then you present it to your God. That's no different, really, to presenting a stew made from a cow, in my opinion. So I don't really know how I feel about animal sacrifice. I don't think it's quite as shocking as I initially thought. Yeah, I'm I can't really say I'm either side of it. But, you know, as a meat eater, yeah, I have to ask who has more respect for these animals, you know, me or them, because, you know, I'm not killing animals myself, but they're not doing it for no reason. They're doing it in utmost reverence. You know, so they, they, yeah. they, they really believe it is for a divine purpose. So, you know, I think they do believe these animals are very significant in life and in death. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I've made it explicit that I have no faith in any god or gods. And in fact, my job is based in non-religion. So I come at this very much from a respect to the people's beliefs kind of attitude. I do feel like I can question them, but I want to do that with respect and kindness and empathy. Where are you coming from on this, Dev? Yeah, pretty similar approach. Yeah, I guess I'm... Yeah, I guess I'd say I'm largely atheist. I don't know if I reject any uh, belief because I think they are interesting. I think I definitely find cultural aspects, you know, such as voodoo, interesting because, you know, I'm of the belief that, like, unless you let religion dictate your life, you know, like how Christianity in America, you know, uh, the, the, the bond there. But I think, you know, if you read a book and... You know, it tells you to be good and be good to other people. Then I don't think that's a, you know, an inherently bad thing if you keep it simple like that. Absolutely. And I think humanists are misrepresented as anti-religious. That's just simply not true. I am humanist. I, I know better than people who seem to think they know my belief system. And the reality is, if you're a humanist, you will actively campaign against religious privilege but that's because it's a privilege it's an inequality it's nothing to do with any disrespect or anti-religion and I have the utmost respect for anything that anyone believes and I think that everyone should have freedom of religion and yeah I, I also find other people's faiths fascinating I'll never believe it but I do find Faith's fascinating. And I do also want to say that it really is as simple as there is no bad religion. There's just bad people who use religion. Yeah. And uh, similar to that, you get elements like this. I'm not blaming Chucky, but, you know, just pop culture as a whole can misrepresent certain religions as more negative than they are. Yeah. And I think that Chucky has gently misrepresented voodoo and vodou but not in a deliberately antagonistic or 
pernicious way. I think particularly, you've got to remember, it's 30 years old. And like you said, it was harder to do even the basic level of research that you and I have done on this sort of thing. So he, the initial writing was inevitably influenced by popular culture and stereotyping. I just want to note as well, because I don't, we haven't really said it, but I think we're, we think Don Mancini as the creator of everything. But, you know, there was a lot of rewriting on the first Child's Play. So I do believe, mm. I do believe a lot of the voodoo stuff came from Tom Holland, the director. Right, right. So that is why Mancini has never really lent into it. Yeah. So let's have a quick look at Louisiana voodoo. And it was never illegal, but it was restricted by laws of black people gathering in the 18th and 19th century and did decline until the tourist trade that I did briefly talk about before. And so it has increased in popularity as it's become more publicly touristy, I suppose. And it's an adapted faith from not just Haitian Vodou, but other influences. And it's a mainly oral tradition, which again goes back to what we were saying about not really being able to research these things. I sincerely doubt that anyone from the Child's Play team went, I'm going to pop down to New Orleans and I'm going to have a chat with some Vodou practitioners. I, I, I don't think they mm, yeah. had the budget to do that. <laughs> and whereas Haitian Vodou is sometimes regarded as problematic because of the misogyny. That isn't the case with Louisiana voodoo because there's more focus on the priestesses and feminism within voodoo. And like I say, I've been to New Orleans and it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And it did feel a lot more like if you'd gone to Greece and they'd had you know, a Hercules statue. And it goes as far as, you know, all kinds of merchandise, up to and including fridge magnets. So there is an element of sensationalism, maybe, but definitely making money from voodoo. But what religion doesn't make money through that sort of thing? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you can, all the different, like, uh, Christianity and stuff, you know, like, St. Peter, like, all the saints and stuff have, like, their own little imagery and iconography and you can get that on you know lots of people do get that on uh like bumper stickers and stuff like that exactly right the fish symbol and yeah, yeah. every every cross on a religious lady's wall is money for the church isn't it yeah i mean if you want to talk about misrepresentation the upside down cross is not a sign of the devil no that's not true that's... <laughs> like, but you know pop culture takes an image that they think is, oh, it's the cross, but upside down. Therefore, it's evil. Yeah. And so briefly, we'll have a chat about Dambala. He is, as we've discussed before, he's an Iowa, not a god. And he is present in both the Haitian and Louisiana traditions. So this is the reason why we've looked at Haitian voodoo and Louisiana voodoo, because I don't feel like it's clear ever within the Chucky franchise which form of voodoo it is and that could be because it's deliberately vague or it could be because it was just it wasn't differentiated at the time it was written you know well one of the funny things now doing research is immediately if you just look up Dumbala, it says out of the thousand or so uh iowa he is generally the most benevolent so, yeah yeah not really accurate to what Chucky is presenting. <laughs> Which is really weird. I speculated that it was a random creation by Don Mancini, that this Dambala was an evil god that was a soft reboot. It, it's not. Dambala is one of the most famous and yeah. revered voodoo and voodoo Iwas and is seen in some traditions as a primordial creator. That's pretty fucking big. And is always represented as a great white serpent. And if we're going to crudely compare it to something we might all understand, he's kind of about the level of Moses within the tradition. So think about how well-known Moses is within Christianity. That's kind of like the level we're looking at here with Dambala. So he's hardly an obscure god like I suggested. 
And you, you said he was always portrayed as benevolent. You're right. Patient, kind, wise and peaceful, but a little bit detached. None of those things seem to apply to the Dambala that is referenced in the Chucky Telly series. That's what I mean by them just grabbing a few recognisable names. If they had just heard someone talking about voodoo, they may well have mentioned Dombala. And so they just took that name out of, basically out of a hat, of all the names they could have chosen. They just picked Dombala. Yeah, it does feel like that. It's kind of like if they had done it with Christianity and then they had been like, yeah, Chucky, he worships Moses, the evil god. I think most people, you know, in America and England and stuff would be like, that doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. I can't speak for people that follow Vodou or Voodoo, but it doesn't feel like there was ever any malice in the depiction in the Child's Play franchise. I think it was a plot device that yeah. had to be expanded as the whole story expanded and became more complicated and complex and deep. I do think that it needs a good rethinking. I think that they need to do something about it because it doesn't feel like it's as sensitively treated as perhaps it could be in a modern world. I wonder if at this point they could... Because we discussed whether or not, yeah, before whether or not Dumbala was good. And obviously Dumbala is good. So there's that disconnect. I wonder if at this point they can have like a quote-unquote reveal that it's someone else or something else pretending to be Dombala. Mm. Yeah, I think that would be a nice way of dealing with it, yes. Because I looked at, in my research, I had a look at the Iowa and I wanted to see, are there any quote-unquote evil Iowa? You know, sort of like how there are angels and devils in Christianity. I wanted to see if there's any darker sides. And... There are many nations and families within the Iowa and the the Geed family, which focuses on death and fertility. But like, you know, like the tarot cards, death is not bad. It's just renewal and continuation. And so we got Baron Samadhi. He's kind of the big the big one. He deals with resurrection and that's kind of close. But then like the people who work with uh, Samadhi, they deal with different kinds of resurrection and different kinds of death. And the closest I could find was Baron Criminel. And he, okay. he was the first person ever to commit murder. And so therefore he deals with the passing of violent criminals or people who have died by violent means. And so okay. possibly if you were going to pick from actual voodoo, that might be someone Chucky could maybe get something out of because not only do they believe that these, the, you know, these Iowa, they, they help people pass on. But you can also call upon them for different, you know, reasons like offerings and sacrifices and stuff. And with Baron Criminal, it's usually, like I say, violent criminals. Like if if someone, if a loved one was murdered, you would call upon this Iowa to enact some kind of retribution. Interesting. And I think some religions do have an opposite to the good gods, the temptation, etc. Similar, you know, like the devil. And I think it's okay to use those gods or Iowa as characters, but this is still a fictional version of voodoo. So I don't know. I'd be fascinated to know what practitioners of voodoo or voodoo actually think about this. Yeah, it's definitely interesting because I guess it ties into something we're not intimately familiar with even though i wouldn't say i'm intimately familiar with christian it's sort of a a debate i guess with you know why is christianity okay to mess around with like this like why is it okay for american tv shows and media to play around with the concept of christianity you mean stuff like lucifer for example yeah stuff like that and i guess that ties in more with uh, historical standings you know, that Christianity, Christian, not just as a religion, but as a form of, you know, like the Vatican and all that. The, the Vatican, on behalf of, you know, God, has a real influence on the world. 
I think what you're getting at is that it's along the lines of it's almost more acceptable to go for whoever has the greatest power. Like at the moment, Boris Johnson's getting a lot of stick because he is in the the public eye more than the local politician from down the road. Similarly, Christianity is the dominant religion and therefore hmm. that's the one that gets the most coverage, be it good or bad. That's probably true. Yeah, I mean, if you make a bad portrayal of God in you know a TV show, that's not going to change anything about the standing of Christianity in society. But something like this, if you reference, you know, a more Eastern religion, then that could mm. e- that can more easily sway people's opinions of what they, what they they what they think they know about those religions. I think for me, I'm glad I did this. I think yeah. it's nice to know a little bit more about what this fantasy world's law is based on. And I would like to see some kind of acknowledgement and expansion and sensitively done elaboration on what voodoo is in this world, where it comes from, where the corruption is and why there's evil and that kind of thing. And like I said before, I'd love to see a John Bishop flashback, but there's no reason why there can't be a Louisiana voodoo priestess as a character in the next series of Chucky, who comes as someone who wants to fight this bad element and could even reveal where the corruption comes from, that maybe it isn't Dambala, it's or whatever, you know? And I think there's definitely scope for some positive voodoo or voodoo characters in season two, for sure. Yeah, because we've discussed how no good person has ever messed around with magic in this story yet. And I think someone can come in and be like, well, yeah, like, we we can use that to our benefit. And many people Well, they have don't. John Bishop. But no one in the teleseries, you're right. Only John Bishop across the whole franchise has ever been a magic user other than Tiffany and Chucky. Yeah, I definitely think that definitely deserves some more... Uh, exploration because we see Tiffany Tiffany's uh, use of magic was very much tied to like voodoo for dummies she is very much uh, if the, this is the right word like gentrifying this kind of r- culture and magic I think Chucky's the same but that's the thing Chucky I would say definitely yeah Chucky is using it for his own gain but with what we see in Child's Play 1 when Norris visits his apartment, like he has floor to ceiling murals of like him praying to John Bishop and him worshipping Dambala. That's never been explored. Even now, it's only just been hinted at that he actually has some belief in this. Mm. It's something I would like to see expanded in season two, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I think... You know, we've had a little bit of a chat, but I am still very interested to see what David comes up with when he does his episode of Kid Stuff on Voodoo and Voodoo, Mm. because I think he's going to do more research than we did. (laughs) I definitely want to hear a full episode of someone talk about this. Mm. Thanks for listening to part three of this accidentally four-part special. We've got one more of these coming up. And then we're going to post the whole thing as a big, fat, long two and a half hour episode. So until next time, wanna play? Chucky Vision is a podcast brought to you by the We Made This Network. Follow us on Twitter at Chucky Vision. Follow the network on Twitter at WMT underscore network. Our website is we made this network.com. The logo was designed by Dev and the theme tune composed by Dark Fantasy Studios. Wanna play?